Since the stock market found an intraday bottom roughly a week ago on Friday, April 5th, the yellow flags that we've been concerned about have not flipped to red. As we always do in this week's video, we'll cover things from both a bullish and bearish perspective. From a bullish perspective, there's no question as of last Friday's close, the bulls have both trends and price in their favor. These are the most important factors for making decisions. From a pattern perspective, many of the pattern risk on risk off patterns that we've been watching for the last two to three years appear to be breaking. And the way that we use any type of pattern in the markets is you respect the pattern as long as it's helpful and when the pattern breaks or is no longer helpful you don't respect it anymore. Twice now in 2013 in late January and again in late March we had numerous setups in place that were precursors to corrections in the stock market between 2010 and 2012, now twice. January, recently, those setups have not worked and that marks potentially an important change in the market's tone. From a fundamental perspective, what could be causing that? We believe that the market's fear of a systemic meltdown, right, wrong, or indifferent, is much, much lower than it was at any time between the spring of 2010 and let's say the spring of 2012. And the primary cause of a reduction in fear is most likely related to a reduced fear of a systemic meltdown in Europe. So obviously what could flip that back to more of a 2010 to 2012 look and that would be the systemic crisis in Europe gaining momentum again, which could put these patterns back on track. Many of the bearish setups that we looked at in both January and March appear to be fading again, as they did in early February after the setups in late January. Some of the things that we'll cover, we'll look at some of these setups, we'll look at some important higher highs that were made this week that favor the bulls, We'll look at shorts versus longs, numerous charts, including some input from the U.S. dollar relative to the S&P 500 index. From a bearish perspective, and the caveat would be there's no question based on where we are currently, the bulls are firmly in control. So the bears need something to change or they need some deterioration on these charts. They had the setups in place roughly a week ago from Friday, did not take advantage of them. Things have improved. In terms of concerns that are still on the table, we still have very narrow leadership in the markets. Not many ETFs, markets, or asset classes have superior strength relative to the S&P 500. We'll cover two exceptions, one being Japan. Telecom stocks look like they're trying to make a bullish turn. In terms of where we are relative to Friday, April 5th versus last Friday, the improvement on many charts, the turns are not complete. So we were concerned heading into the morning of Friday, April 5th. Things improved last week, but not enough to really be in a position where we're waving green flags yet instead of yellow flags. So we need to see a little bit more. We'll cover some hesitation that we still see in the credit markets in this video. We'll also look at proof that stocks still haven't pulled away from bonds in a convincing manner, although they are leaning back towards the bullish end of the spectrum. The Fed is trying to create positive inflation primarily to reinflate asset prices, which helps create the wealth effect. When your house is worth more, when your property is worth more, when your 401k is worth more, you have a tendency to feel better and you have a tendency to spend. That's the wealth effect. And the Fed is hoping that that additional spending eventually leads to hiring. 
This week's video is being shot on the road, so some of the audio in the slides and charts that follow may be of a little bit lower quality. We'll be back in Atlanta next week and back in the CCM studios. To view the video in full screen mode, use this icon in the lower right hand corner of your video player. To improve the clarity of the charts, use this icon in the lower right hand corner of your video player. If you're a stock market bear, this is the chart that may give you the most hope. The vast majority of the charts have started to slant back towards the bullish camp. This is junk bonds, more aggressive bonds relative to more conservative bonds, TLT or long term treasuries. So this can be thought of as a risk on versus risk off chart. This is aggressive, this is defensive. For the most part, when the ratio is above this line here and rising, the S&P 500 does well. When the ratio breaks below this band here, stocks tend to be weak. Act that is resistance, stocks weak. Act that is resistance, stocks weak. We've got a battle going on here. It's not really clear. You can see this uptrend line. We've that's what's favorable for the stock market bears. We seem to have broken below that here. If you're a bull, the good sign is, is this past week, JNK outperformed TLT by 1.5%, and we're still above this band, which tends to be bullish. If you're a stock market bear, you want this ratio to come down into this area. Some other things of interest. If you're a bear... RSI support for this ratio has been clearly broken here, which typically means that the odds of this uptrend breaking have increased. So that's good if you're a stock market bear. The other thing that leans a little bearish still, even after last week, is you have a bearish MACD cross here. From a bullish perspective, Williams percent R this week was able to recapture negative 80, telling us that the bearish momentum for the ratio may have turned. You can see recently when Williams percent R was able to recapture negative 80 on a closing basis on a weekly chart, stocks tended to rally. Recaptured, stocks tended to rally. Recaptured, rally ensued. This tends to lean towards the bullish camp. Mixed bag on this chart may be the most important chart that we'll be watching in the next few weeks. Flipping back now, this is risk on relative to risk off. This is the S&P 500 relative to AGG, the aggregate bond market. So this is basically stocks versus bonds. Ratio rises, stocks are in favor relative to bonds. Ratio falls, stocks are out of favor relative to bonds. Point of the exercise. When we had corrections, this is the S&P 500 here where the cursor is. When we had corrections, the ratio had a tendency to make a series of lower highs denoted by these orange arrows. Lower highs and eventually the stock market rolled over. Here the ratio makes a discernible and clear lower high if I come down here the S&P 500 corrected. Last week, we were down in this area. This chart looked like it was rolling over here, similar to this and similar to this. However, this week, we made a higher high here, which is different from this and different from this. We also look at the moving averages. Rallies tend to ensue when the ratio is above the two moving averages and the blue is above the red, and they're all sloping upward, bullish for stocks. Same case here, bullish for stocks. We've recaptured that look as of last week. So as this chart sits now, it's tending now to flip back towards the bullish end of the spectrum. Still somewhat of a mixed bag, though. SPY divided by IEF. This is a chart we've looked at numerous times. We still have not clearly broken above resistance here. Acted as resistance, the ratio, stock market corrected. Acted as resistance, stock market corrected. We've been stalled in this area now for six weeks. For us to redeploy capital more aggressively, 
from a bullish perspective, we'd like to see a bullish breakout in this direction, similar to something like this or something in this area. If it reverses, then we'll keep a little cash on hand or potentially look at defensive assets like TLT. Same ratio, we've looked at this chart for weeks as well. Last week, you can see we were down here below resistance. This seemed to favor the stock market bears. This week, stocks rallied relative to bonds. SPY outperformed Intermediate Term Treasuries, or IEF, by 2.39%. Unlike this bearish look here, where the pink line acted as clear resistance and we made a series of lower highs here and the stock market peaked down here and corrected where the cursor is now we seem to be hanging around the pink line in more of a bullish manner we actually made a slight higher high this week so this also tends to lean towards the bullish end of the spectrum the indicators on this page as well still side with the bulls this is a monthly chart of the S&P 500 index point of showing this chart it's bullish and there's really nothing on it that's not in the bullish arena you can see the tone the market has changed the pattern before correction at resistance correction at resistance correction at resistance broke the pattern it's a bullish breakout if we correct, we have support back in the 1500 area. 1476 would probably be your worst case scenario. This is a bullish breakout. The blue is above the red. That's bullish. Price above both moving averages. And the slopes of the moving averages are positive. MACD, bullish. This is risk on versus risk off. S&P 500 divided by the VIX. Point of the exercise, corrections typically occur, at least in recent history, in this area here when the ratio gets below the orange line. Correction. Ratio below the orange line. Correction. You can see recently a lot of white space down here, and if anything, we've tended to gravitate towards the upper end of this trend channel. We get corrections here and here, You'll notice the ratio goes below the moving averages and the moving averages roll over. Ratio below the moving averages, moving averages roll over. Bearish cross in the moving average, blue. Below red, bearish cross, correction, correction. Right now we don't have any of that. Moving averages are turning back up and price or the ratio is above. So if you're a bear, you want this chart to look more like this or this. And then you also want it to get down into this area here it's something we'll be watching right now this chart looks a lot better than it did a week ago might point out that this is possible resistance here as well one of the odd things about this market is not many ETFs or markets or asset classes are outperforming the S&P 500 this happens to be one of them the EWJ or Japan ETF you can see we've got a bullish breakout here on the ratio. Ratio above the moving averages. Slopes up. This looks good. Another market where the complexion may be turning is gold. We have a long-term base here of support. that goes all the way back to 2009. This is gold relative to the S&P 500. When the ratio rises, gold is in favor relative to stocks. As you can see here with this blue line in 2013, we've clearly broken below, especially in recent weeks, this long-term support line. If gold were to rally, which is possible relative to the S&P 500, this is now potentially serious resistance on any retracement from gold. Another pattern that seems to have broken, this is IEF, or risk off, relative to risk on, divided by the S&P 500. When this ratio bounced at support here, the S&P 500 corrected. Bounced near support here, correction. See, long term, this line here acted as resistance, kind of a cluster around it. 
resistance, support, support in the neighborhood. If I follow that line down now to recent history, it appears that we're having trouble with this line now. It acted as support in the past. Now it appears that we've broken below it, which is bullish for stocks and bearish for bonds. We may have gotten a little head fake in the past few weeks. We came back up to the line and bounced down. If you're a stock market bear, something that is positive is momentum here for bonds relative to stocks. Looks like it's trying to turn. So the bears, the stock bears, would like to see this ratio move into this area. It's another chart that we'll be watching. We'll try to provide updates on Twitter. The last chart was risk off bonds relative to stocks. Now we're moving back to the more traditional look of risk on versus risk off. This is Russell 2000 growth stocks relative to TLT, so stocks relative to bonds. We're looking at simple support and resistance on a long-term basis. Point of the exercise, for the most part, when the ratio is above these lines, it tends to be bullish. Here the ratio moves above. This is the S&P 500 stocks do well. Here the ratio moves above. S&P 500 does well. Conversely, here resistance, the ratio falls. This is a weekly chart. Stocks corrected for several weeks. Ratio can't break out. Falls. Stocks experience a correction. Ratio hits resistance and falls. Correction. You can see we've broken out in a bullish manner, which is similar to this period here, and now it appears that we've come back and retested this breakout, and it appears as if this week we bounced in a bullish manner. So if this ratio moves in this direction next week, that's bullish for stocks. If you're a stock market bear, you'd like to see it come down in this area here. This is another chart that we'll be watching and providing updates on. Another ETF that appears to be establishing or attempting to establish a bullish trend relative to the S&P 500 weekly chart. This is the ratio of IYZ telecom stocks relative to the S&P 500. For the most part, good things happen when the ratio is above the moving averages, when the blue moving average is above the red, and they all have positive slopes. This is what the most bullish scenario looks like for telecom stocks relative to the S&P 500. And this is what the most bearish scenario looks like. We have a bullish cross, blue above red, all of them sloping up. It appears as if telecommunication stocks are trying to establish a new bullish trend relative to the S&P 500. Another pattern that seems to have broken, this is shorting the Russell 2000 relative to the S&P 500. So in this case, we're looking at risk off relative to risk on. When the ratio is rising, that's what risk off looks like. This is the S&P 500 falling. When the ratio is falling, stocks tend to do well. You can see the pattern recently was we were in this trend channel. Bounce at support, stocks corrected. Bounce at support, stocks corrected. Here, we're not really bouncing at support. If anything, we appear to be trying to violate this trend line. So the look of this chart tends to side with the stock market bulls. If you're a bear, you want it to look more like this or this. This is another chart that in previous weeks appeared to be lining up to side with bearish outcomes. This is the U.S. dollar, UUP, relative to the S&P 500. It can be thought of as risk off relative to risk on. When the ratio rises, that tends to look more like risk off. S&P 500 corrects here in this instance. Ratio rises, S&P 500 corrects, rises correction. Last week, we were hugging in this area that looked like we were trying to turn up and bounce. However, this week, the ratio fell by 2.72%, and we did not hold this trend line here. Now we're below it. Could get a bounce here, but still, as this chart sits now, Moving averages, blue below red, that's bearish for this ratio. The slopes of them are down and price is below. For us to become more bearish based on this chart, 
it should look like this instead of this. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or offer to buy or sell any security or any related financial instruments, nor should any of the content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management, LLC, or CCM, is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.